Hello everyone and welcome back to part 4 of our match tutorial series. By the end of this episode what we're going to have is some matching logic. So if I hit play here and I check the console, what you'll see is that we are checking the board and we have a normal vertical match where we have a green vertical match here and we have a normal horizontal match where we've got a purple potions here. It's going to be able to detect any types of matches on the board and we're also going to add in some logic around being able to recreate the board if we start out with matches. And if you're enjoying this tutorial series, please leave us a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So I'm going to start by opening up my potion board, and I'm going to talk about very quickly what we did in the last tutorial, which is create this initialized board. It just loops through the X and the Y, and it creates a potion at every place where it's allowed to create a potion. This week, what we're going to be creating is a public bool that is going to be called check board, and a few helper functions to be able to check whether we have a match or not. So check board is going to be responsible for telling us overall if we have a match as well as removing the potions down the track. In order to do that, we'll be creating a isConnected method, which is going to just be telling us if the potion we're looking at currently is connected to other potions of the same type, then we want to be able to return whether we have a match. And to assist us doing that, we're going to create a method called checkDirection. And check direction is going to be used to, from the potion you're looking at, either check vertically or check horizontally. And seeing as we're using helper methods for things, it's nice if we return this in a bit of a easier to read format. So we're going to create a public class that's going to be called match result. And in that match result, we're going to have all the potions that were connected as well as the direction that they matched with. So we're going to create a list of potion and we'll call that connected potions. And we'll also have a match direction that we'll call direction. And we haven't created that yet, but that's just going to be an enum. So public enum match direction. And this is just so it's easier for us to visualize when we have a match, the type of match direction that it was in. So we're going to have vertical match, a horizontal match, a long vertical match. So that's when you match with more than three potions, a long horizontal match, and then we'll have a super match. So that's when you've matched in more than one way and we can create some special potions down the track if we want to do that, but it's good to identify it for now. And then none when we don't have a match. So armed with that, let's get started with our check board. For now, I'm just going to make it return false so that we don't get the error message. And then we'll create a debug.log message that just says checking board. So we know that we've started checking when we're playing the game. And then we'll also create a bool called has matched and has set it to false. And has matched is just telling us if we have at least one check within the board, then we have a match. We're also going to create a list of type potion called potions to remove, but we aren't actually going to be removing any in this one. We'll look at that when we do some more advanced matching later on. So checkboard is actually going to work in a very similar way to the way initializing the board does in that we're going to be looping over um, the X and the Y to basically move over every single node within the board. When we move over the node within the board, we're then going to basically check that potion, check its surrounding potions, so above it, below it, to the left and right of it and see if we have matches and also make sure that the node that we're on actually has a potion so we don't return null errors or anything like that. And then if we have at least three, then we're gonna return a match. So we'll create our two for loops. So we're gonna say four X on the width and four Y on the height. So we'll start out by checking if potion node is usable, which would just be if potion board at point X, Y dot is usable then proceed to get potion class in node. So we'll create a potion variable called potion and it's gonna be equal to basically the current point that we're at. So xy.potion.getComponent of the potion. And now that we have the potion, ensure it's not matched. So we're gonna say if the potion is not matched, then run some matching logic. And this is where we're going to start using our is connected. So we'll create a match result and that's going to be called matched potions. And then we'll say is connected and we'll pass in the potion that we're currently at. And now let's create this method. So because up here I've got this match result that we're returning, we want to have this also return a match result. So we'll say match result is connected and we'll pass in a potion because that's what we've got up here. And before we write the code of this class, I'm just going to show you a quick visual of how it will work so that it makes a bit more sense as you're writing the code and it doesn't just seem 
confusing. Okay, so let's say this is our board and we're about to run our check board process. We're gonna be starting at zero, zero, which is the bottom left here. And we're gonna be running along and basically what we're gonna do is check everything horizontally to it and everything vertically to it. So either above and below it or left and right of it. So in this case, you can see obviously I've got these three potions here, which would form a match. We're gonna loop through each of these potions and we're gonna say, make sure that we set them to matched. And then we're gonna check for a match vertically from this node as well. In this case, obviously there's a blue potion above us, so we don't have a match. We would then move on to the next potion. So we're now at one zero. So we're still on the red potions. And because we've already written the logic in our checkboard to ensure it's not a match, it would not try to do this again because we don't wanna get duplicates of this one match. We wanna get every unique match that we can. And that's effectively all we're going to be doing, but I just wanted to show you how this is gonna work so that when we walk through it and you're going through the code, you'll know what the end result's gonna be. Okay, so back in our code, I'm gonna create a list of type potion and we'll call that connected potions. And we'll just make that a new. And we'll also have a reference to our potion type that I'll just call potion type. And that will be the potion that was passed in dot potion type. So now we have a list to store any potential matches in and we also have a reference to the potion type that we're working with. So we know if it's gonna be a red, white, blue, green potion. We'll start out by adding the initial potion that we've got. So we'll say connected potions dot add the current potion that we have, and then we'll start checking for matches. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're going to check right, then we'll check left, and then we'll see, have we made a three match? If we have made a three match, then that's the point where we're gonna say, hey, cool, I've made a, you know, horizontal white potion match. It'd also be worth here checking for more than three. So if we've looped across till we've actually found four potions, then we've got a long match. So we'd have a long match here. And this would be a long horizontal match. This would be a horizontal match. And now we just need to check our verticals. So we would then, if we haven't then made a match at this point, then what we'll do is we'll clear out the connected potions just to make sure that we don't have any lingering accidental matches. We'll re-add our initial potion and then we'll check up and check down. And then we'll do the same things again where we've got our, have we got a vertical match? And this is gonna be a vertical match this time. And then we'll check for a long one. So a long vertical match as well. And so you can see here, we're doing the check left, we're doing a check right, we're doing a check up and a check down. And all of those checks are actually the same logic, just with a different direction that you're headed in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this check direction method, and it's basically just gonna take a vector two input to determine the direction it's going in, and then do the same logic regardless. 